Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today on this very historic occasion. I'd first like to introduce um, NYSID President Dick Iannuzzi behind me, as well as UFT President Michael Mogrew, State Education Commissioner John King, and of course, we have Governor Cuomo. As I opened up, today is an historic day for New York students. The governor said that he was going to fight for our students and lobby for their future. And he followed through on that promise. Thanks to the governor's leadership and the efforts and dedication of Commissioner John King, NYSE President Dick Iannuzzi, UF President Michael Mogrew, and New York City, we are here today to announce a groundbreaking agreement on a new and improved statewide teacher evaluation system. And I'd like to thank Dick, John, Michael, and their staffs, for all of them for working together, putting their differences aside, and bringing their commitment to improving New York's public education system to, together. This historic agreement establishes a statewide teacher evaluation system that is directly linked to student performance, ends a two-year-long stalemate that will make New York the national model for education reform. This agreement gives significant guidance to local school districts for the implementation of that teacher evaluation system that is based both on student achievement, classroom observations, nationally recognized measures of teacher performance, and a tighter rating system. The teacher evaluation will be divided into two sections, teacher performance and student achievement. Teacher performance will account for 60% of a teacher's rating and will be based on rigorous and nationally recognized measures. Student achievement will account for 40% of a teacher's evaluation with 20% from state testing and 20% from locally developed tests that will be subject to SED approval. School districts will have three options, including the option of using state tests to measure up to 40% of a teacher's rating. In addition, the agreement for the first time gives the SED commissioner the authority to approve or disapprove local evaluation plans that are deemed insufficient. This will add rigor to the process and ensure evaluation plans comply with the law. As part of this announcement, with the assistance of Governor Cuomo, New York City, and the United Federation of Teachers, have an agreement on an expedited, streamlined, and fair appeals process that will be part of an agreed upon teacher evaluation system. As I've said today, this is an historic agreement that will significantly improve the quality of New York's public education. It is now my pleasure to first introduce the President of the United Federation of Teachers, Mike Mulgrew, followed by NYSIT President Dick Iannuzzi, and then SED Commissioner John King. Uh, thank you, Larry. Uh, first, I cannot thank enough Governor Cuomo for his leadership on this issue. And I would like to also thank uh, Larry Schwartz, Jim Malatros, and the entire staff here of the Governor's Office. They have been uh, tireless in working with so many of us to get this deal done. Um, the idea that we now have taken a 2010 law, we have clarified it and strengthened it, which will allow the school systems across this state to now move forward with the good work that will help the students across this entire state. As for New York City, when I asked the governor a month ago to please intervene, he reluctantly said, I will try, and now his leadership specifically has allowed us to deal with the issue which the mayor has said we would never agree to, which is the appeal process. This does not lead to an overall agreement on teacher evaluation in New York City. And we are hoping now that this appeal process, which is a fair appeal process, which includes third party independent validation of teachers' ratings, which includes an, a process where we can deal with issues of harassment. 
I am hoping now that the mayor of New York City understands that to do real education reform, it's about helping schools get better and not about closing schools. Thank you very much. I'd now like to bring up Dick Iannuzzi. Thank you, Michael. Um, let me also um, congratulate all of the parties behind me, um, but certainly to thank Governor Cuomo for his support and for his work in allowing us to get to a place that, uh, that we've all wanted to be. Today is historic. I would uh, say to you it's historic because we are providing students with the opportunity to have an effective teacher in front of every classroom. That is the shared goal, and I think that goal has been achieved by the process that we have put together today. It's achieved because those things that have stood in the way, such as the lawsuit that needed to be settled, are now out of the way. And I think that those parties around the state who have been sitting on a sideline sort of watching and waiting to see what has to happen next can now get about the, uh, the business of working to continually improve the performance of teachers and as a result improve the performance of, uh, of students. Again, my thanks to uh, the governor and to his staff. Uh, Larry and Jim have been a super part of making this happen, and obviously to the staff of the uh, commissioner's office and my own great people who really were there for us. So uh, I thank you all, and now let me introduce Commissioner John King. Uh, good morning, uh, or good afternoon, rather. Thank you. I'm very grateful to, uh, to Dick and Michael for their collaboration in this process and to the governor for his extraordinary leadership, to the staffs at NYSE at UFT and the governor's office, to our staff at the department, particularly my executive deputy, Commissioner Val Gray. Uh, the goal for the department and for the Board of Regents has always been to ensure that we are helping students prepare for success in college and careers. The announcement today is precisely in that spirit. It makes our state's evaluation system, I think, a national model for a rigorous evaluation system that will help students to excel and ensure that they are prepared indeed for success in college and careers. It would not have been possible to get to this day without the governor's extraordinary leadership. Uh, we look forward to working with him and with NYSE and with UFT to ensure the effective implementation of the evaluation system in the months ahead. Uh, this really is an extraordinary example of effective collaboration. Um, we look forward to implementing the region's reform agenda to try to ensure that students have the right standards, the right assessments, and the quality of teaching and school leadership that they deserve. Uh, it's my pleasure to, to introduce the governor of the state of New York, Governor Andrew Cuomo. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Commissioner King. Uh, to all my colleagues, uh, you've heard it all. In short, uh, today is a great day for the schools of, uh, within the state of New York and the school children in the state of New York. Government works today after two years of talking about a teacher evaluation system, even longer if you put in, uh, you, you count the years that we talked about passing a law, but two years ago we passed the law and we've been talking about implementing the system uh, since then. Uh, today, the evaluation system, the performance system, becomes a reality. We had the, the way the system will work is there is now a, an agreed-to statewide regulatory evaluation system. The local school districts will then customize that system, if you will, to meet their particular needs of that local district. We have over 700 districts in the state. Uh, all of them are a little different. So this system is a statewide system, but customized to meet the needs of the locality. Uh, New York City had asked uh, us uh, to work with them in overcoming an obstacle that they had uh, found in New York City, which is what was called the appeals process. Part of the evaluation system has an appeals process because if a teacher is found ineffective, the teacher has a right to appeal. And uh, there's an issue as to what would that appeals process be. In this agreement, we have also agreed to an appeals process uh, between the UFT and New York City, uh, which will go into effect uh, by the end of the year. So New York City will get the 4% additional money, uh, which is a condition of having an evaluation in place, which we talked about in the state of the state. We'll now turn our focus to local governments uh, and local school districts all across the state to make sure that they get it done within one year, which is the second piece of this equation. 
This agreement today should secure the federal funding, which was at risk. As you know, the federal government had said uh, close to $1 billion would be at risk because we had not put in place a teacher evaluation. Uh, but most of all, this is a major step forward to actually increase the performance of the education system. Teachers who are doing well should be rewarded. Uh, teachers who need assistance should get the assistance. We should identify the strategies that are working in the classroom and schools all across the state so we know what to replicate. And we will now have an evaluation system which will bring us further uh, down the road to an actual performance-based system. Uh, applause and credit for this uh, truly remarkable achievement. Go to the people who are behind me. Um, I want to applaud Commissioner King, who's worked very long and hard, and his staff. Um, Dick Iannuzzi, President of New York State uh, United Teachers Association, I want to thank him. Uh, this was not uh, an easy discussion for any people, any of the people involved. I believe this is a better system than any system that had been contemplated or discussed up until now. This is a more rigorous system. It's a more effective system. I applaud them for that. Michael Mulgrew, uh, president of UFT, who has worked extraordinarily hard uh, and uh, been extraordinarily reasonable uh, uh, in making this agreement today. I also want to thank Mayor Bloomberg and his team, who have worked very hard to make today a reality. Uh, and as a point of personal privilege, uh, Larry Schwartz, Secretary to the Governor, and Jim Malatris, uh, my head of policy, who, um, on top of everything else they've been doing, uh, really were above and beyond uh, in making this a reality. Again, it's a victory for all New Yorkers. Government works, uh, and that, that makes this state a better state. Questions, comments, and I ask my colleagues to step up and join me. Is, uh, the New York City component of this, exactly how will that work, and what broke the logjam? The, remember how the, this is, it's a little complex, I want to make sure everyone understands uh, what, what we did here. First, you had to come up with a statewide regulatory system. That was between SED, State Education Department, and basically NICE at the Statewide Teachers Union. That had been going on for two years we designed the statewide teacher system. That will now, now be presented in a bill that will be submitted as part of the budget amendment, but it is an agreed to system. Once you have the statewide system, it's then up to the 700 localities, 700 plus localities, to customize their evaluation system within that statewide regulatory framework. Uh, and those local districts will now go about that. They have a year to do that. If they don't have it done at the end of the year, uh, we will withhold the 4% additional state funding. If they get it done before September, can they get bonus points for the performance funding? New York City had identified a problem to enacting that process, which was they couldn't agree on an appeals process. Again, appeals process being, once a teacher gets a rating, what are the teacher's rights uh, to make sure the rating is proper? And how does the teacher contest that rating? Obviously, we want to be fair to everyone, and a fair appeals process was important to everyone. There had been an ongoing discussion between the UFT and New York City. They were unable to reach a resolution on the appeals process. They asked us to get involved. We did. We spent uh, a lot of time talking about it. Um, I think uh, UFT was uh, uh, reasonable. I think the city was reasonable. And we have a process that we've agreed to as an appeals process that will go into effect at the end of the year, the day by the end of the year, the day before the 4% uh, deadline would be reached. So New York City will get the 4%. Does that need to be into the, into the budget amendments? Yes, that will also be a uh, bill that will be put in as a budget amendment. What is the process, though? But, uh, excuse me one second. The, it was always going to be in the budget amendment, Casey. The question was, did we have an agreed to system, or was it going to be a system that I put in place? This is an agreed to uh, appeals process. We'll give you the bill, Ken. It lays out. Uh, when the teacher can have a hearing, who's going to be at the hearing, what's the right to appeal the hearing, what are the time frames for those hearings to take place, et cetera. 
Um, Was that a fair explanation? Fair enough. <laughs> Sound very simple. <laughs> From my point of view, it was. <laughs> Governor, how much of a role do you think your ultimatum played in the negotiations? And just as a follow-up, how much does this agreement today match up with what you would have wanted and put in the 30-day amendments had an agreement not been reached? I think, Nick, um, I think, look, everyone knew that it had to get done. Everyone knew that two years was too long. Everyone knew that we had federal money at risk. But even more importantly, everybody knew that we needed an evaluation system to make our education system better. And everyone here genuinely wants the education system better. Uh, I think sometimes the governor has a role to play uh, from a leadership position just in, in, in making sure things get done and setting a deadline and providing a little encouragement. I think it's fair to say I provided encouragement, don't you encouragement. think? Encouragement. That's a good word. We're going to stick with that word, as a matter of fact, encouragement. Uh, expand a little bit on the last 20 percent. It says here three testing options. Do you want to explain what that is and what exactly they'll be measuring? Is it rate of growth? Is it a flat score? Sure. So there, there are a number of options for the local 20. We start with the ability of districts to bargain use of the state tests in a different way from the state growth score. Uh, we'll provide at the state level a growth score uh, that could be used by, by local districts, and then they would bargain uh, both the use of that score and how it is assigned um, to the different rating categories. Uh, districts might also choose to use a school-wide measure, a school-wide growth score for the local 20. Uh, they might also choose to use an approved assessment. We have a number of third-party assessments that we've already approved. Uh, or they could choose to use a uh, district or BOCES-created assessment as long as it meets the standards of rigor and comparability that have been established by the department. So there are a number of options for that local 20, but they are constrained and they are rigorous. And what would you say is the main difference of that last 20 percent from today's agreement versus the 2010 law? I think it's it's really about clarity and specificity. I think there was a there was ambiguity, and certainly that was a factor in the litigation trying to resolve that ambiguity. I think now we have clarity for districts and their bargaining units, and they'll be able to move forward uh, expeditiously to implement the system. Could you give an example of that, please? Sure. So one of the issues in the litigation was whether or not state tests could be used for the second 20. And uh, how we have resolved that issue is to be clear that state tests can, in fact, be used for the local 20, but they have to be used differently. Uh, then you get to the question of what does different mean and how different is different. And for that reason, we have laid out very specific options that districts can choose uh, that would be a different measure. So you might look rather than at um, growth relative to other teachers. You might look at how the student, what percentage of the students met a growth target uh, for the class. Or you might use, as I mentioned, the school-wide uh, growth score. And just follow up, what's the impact on those districts that already have deals in place between the districts and the well, I expect that districts, many districts have in place uh, placeholder language awaiting resolution of the, of the issues that have been at stake here. Uh, we expect they'll move quickly uh, to resolve that, that placeholder language uh, based on the agreement today. There are other districts that may have agreed to things that are slightly different. They'll go back to the table and, and bargain to be consistent with the statute. Part of, part of the process here, and thanks to the governor's leadership, is that there will be a very clear target submission date. Districts will have to submit by that date. The department will review the agreements. And only those districts with approved agreements will be able to get the 4% state aid increase. Is there um, going to be an increase of the number of tests that children have to take because this is going to apply you know, from the beginning of school to graduation? Will they have to take more state tests or more? Will it just increase the amount of tests they have to take? Not necessarily. I mean, that, that's a local decision. Many districts have in place assessments that they are using. They may be tasks. They may be performance-based assessments, essays, research projects. Um, districts will need to do two things. They'll need to, to make a decision about that local 20 by looking at the state-provided options. And they will also have to look at those subjects where there's not a state test to identify uh, student learning objectives what goals they'll set for students in those subjects and what evidence they'll use to measure students' progress towards those goals. This is just to clarify, maybe Mr. Moger can comment on this. As far as you're concerned, is this done or is there further negotiation with the Bloomberg administration to lock this down? Oh, this just clarifies the appeal process. 
Um, so the appeal process, the mayor had uh, told many people that we could not get to an agreement on the appeals process. We have been very uh, forthright uh, since the beginning of this whole evaluation process. We said we needed three things. We need an evaluation system that is going to continually help teachers get better throughout their careers so they can help more children. We need a system that will target teachers' uh, weaknesses, those who are struggling, and put supports in place. And if that doesn't work, they need to leave the school system. And we need it to be done fairly. Um, money of the discussions we had on the school improvement grants, our PLA schools, uh, the hang-up on getting that uh, application in was the appeals process. The city said that the union would not come to an agreement on it. We disagreed with them. We asked the governor to step in. We now have an agreement on that appeals process. If the mayor chooses, uh, he can speak to us about putting in a SIG application for the 33 schools in question. Uh, that's something you're going to have to ask him. Uh, as far as I know, he, I think he has uh, decided that he would rather close schools than help fix them. So this does not... This gets us over what the city had pinpointed was the rough point. The governor came in, he assisted us. We now have a fair uh, appeals process. Independent validation is in there, which is what we were asking for from the beginning, and we would not have that now if it was not for the governor. Does the chancellor have the final say, though? That was one of the big sticking points, you know, in terms of the appeal. Uh, well, the independent validator, uh, will be exactly that. It's a validator that goes in on a second law. There are a percentages of cases that will be taken out and given to an independent panel, a three-person per panel, in terms of issues of harassment and things, that, uh, ratings that we feel were unfair and outside of the job performance. Those will not fall under the purview of the chancellor. One more question. Um, do you feel that it's uh, reasonable for the city now to use the turnaround model in six schools, even though they haven't even well, under, under the federal regulations, districts can ask for a change in model. Uh, the city has indis indicated that they intend to make a change in model. We haven't received applications yet. When we do, we'll review them applying the same standards we've applied uh, to all the other applications we've received, not only from the city, but from other districts. Your district agreement is going to be, isn't that closing schools, letting all applicants be really disruptive to the schools? The district will need to make a determination, school by school, uh, what they'd like to request funding for. They'll, they'll make that determination. They'll submit their applications, and we'll review them. Thanks, everybody. We're going to go. Commissioner, do you have any estimate of how many teachers might be shown the door and then lose their jobs as a result of this? No, but I, but I would say that I think, unfortunately, a lot of the conversation has focused on that issue, what number of teachers will be removed. Actually, I think the goal is something different. It's to, to create a performance management system that helps everyone get better. Certainly, there are people who will struggle. Uh, we'll get them support based on uh, this evaluation system. And sure, if folks don't improve even with support, uh, this may not be the right profession. I think all of us standing here agree with that. But the goal of this system is to help everyone get better, to identify those who are excelling so they can be models for their colleagues, uh, to, and to help those in the middle get better over time so that we can advance the interests of students. Are you having indications from the federal government that this will be acceptable to them? Uh, yeah, a couple of points if I can. First, on the, uh, this was never about, this was not a punitive system. This is a performance management system that is in everyone's best interest. Teachers also. What teachers are performing best? What are the best strategies? What's working? What are the best practices? How can we learn from those practices? What teachers are struggling? How do we get them the help they need, etc.? And then if there is a professional who is not excelling in that position, then it's not working for anyone at one point. Uh, so this is basic a performance management system. We've spoken ad nauseum in this room about it's not just how much you spend, it's what you get for the money. It's not just how much you spend, it's what performance are you getting. New York is at the top of the curve when it comes to spending. Uh, we're down at the bottom in terms of graduation rates. We need performance. This is a performance evaluation system. Uh, I spoke to Secretary Duncan today, this morning. He was going to have a comment uh, this afternoon. Uh, my position is this resolves all the issues he raised. I believe the issue of the federal government saying they may uh, want their money back, so to speak, uh, should be off the table because we have done everything that we needed to do, and all the representations that this state made have been fulfilled. 
uh, and I expect that the federal government will come to the same conclusion. Um, as far as the New York City situation, just to be clear, the uh, reconciling, resolving the appeals process so the city could have a completed evaluation, so New York City could get the 4%, was the task at hand. Are there continuing outstanding issues when it comes to education between the city and the UFT? Yes. Yes, that is clear. And that's what Mr. Mulgrew spoke to. Uh, so we never said we're going to resolve all the open issues. We said we're going to resolve this issue for the purpose of the evaluation, which is important because that's then 4% of additional state money for the city. And the 4% is significant, especially for New York City. Michael, one more question. Um, one of the issues that the mayor had raised was they wanted a presumption of ineffectiveness and, uh, and be able to terminate more easily if there were two consecutive ratings of uh, ineffective. Is that in there where you know, the presumption would be to prove that the system was flawed rather than? If the entire process is followed from the first appeal to the ability for uh, us to take a percentage of cases to a harassment panel, second year independent validator going into classrooms, watching teachers and observing teachers. If all the people are in agreement uh, and that a teacher's improvement plan was followed, they will get that. But those the criteria has to be met before that would be put into place. Regarding the, the 40% of uh, testing, deciding which test to use, whether it's a state or local test, who decides that? Can a superintendent on his or her own decide that, or do they have to bargain that with the local uh, teachers? The, the state 20 is determined by the state. The local 20 is locally bargained. Well, it says that there's, a 40, there's a, an option for the state test to be used 40 percent. Exactly. So the state test would be used for 20 using a state growth score. Then the local district and their local bargaining unit could reach an agreement on how they would use the state test differently for that local 20. Uh, so it still does need to be, to be bargained, uh, but we've constrained the choices so that there are very clear, precise choices for that local 20. Your agency would have to approve all 700 of those? That's right. And you've got logistically, if they're punching up against the deadline next January, you've got systems in place. Well, what what, the, what we've set out is a system where we would receive, begin to receive the um, submissions from districts in July. We would review them through the summer and into the fall as people complete their agreements to ensure that by January people understand whether or not they're eligible for the 4% increase in state aid. The critical thing about the review is it ensures a baseline of rigor uh, across the system. Uh, what I expect will happen is that districts will see the uh, early approvals as models uh, and we will move quickly towards uh, full implementation across the state. Are there any um, issues that previously would have been collectively bargained on the local level that do not need to be? I think the way I'd characterize it is that the framework is much clearer. I think there were places where there was ambiguity about, there was ambiguity about the choices uh, that made it difficult for local districts and their bargaining units to figure out exactly what it was they needed to bargain and what their choices were. Uh, we've created now a system that has a very clear menu uh, from which local districts and their bargaining units will choose. Governor, what else is in your 30-day amendments? There is, uh, just to clarify for, for a quick moment, the. The 2010 law was passed, I believe, and I don't, I, I'm, my colleagues probably don't share this. The, when the 2010 Race to the Top law was passed, the driving force was qualifying for federal funding. We were trying to qualify for a federal grant. You needed a teacher evaluation system. So what was pushing the law was get the law passed. We can qualify for a federal grant. We qualified, and as a matter of fact, we qualified very high, and we won. However, when you went to implement that 2010 provision, it was incredibly difficult and misleading and tedious and subject to interpretation. That was the two years. So, Kara, on your question, you had to really sit down and figure out what all those provisions meant. And you could have done it in years of litigation, or you could have come together in the best interest of the state and shown reasonableness uh, and worked it out, which is what happened here today. This, so these both provisions, the two separate legal provisions, they will both go in as 30-day amendments. 
On the additional 30-day amendments, I can get you that uh, list, Nick. I don't have it here. Also, Tom, when you say what kind of workload will this be for SED, the template is relatively straightforward. It's basically 60% classroom observation, 40% achievement, and then there are a couple of options on how to get to the 40%. The commissioner approves everything, but I think the commissioner's point is the districts will look at the plans that get approved initially. Mm -hmm. There are not that many varieties here, and they'll probably pick the, uh, the, uh, the, the common template and follow the common template. Governor, do you suggest that this um, agreement will mean that the city gets its 4% yes. funding? Yes. But they don't have a citywide agreement yet, which is what you're requiring for districts as a generous entity. Well, the holdup on the evaluation system as I understand it from, uh, from New York City, was the appeals process. Uh, they can work out everything else. They didn't have an appeals process, and they were afraid they were going to lose the 4 percent. So this was about resolving the appeals process, which we did. They still don't have an agreement, though. So who's, now who's the responsibility of it to get that, get that agreement done? Well, they have many other issues that they have to work out on an ongoing basis. This issue of the SIG schools is a major issue, as you've heard today. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Mulgrew and the mayor have plenty of issues uh, on the table, and there's plenty of disagreement on the table. The issue about the evaluation and the appeals to get the 4 percent has been resolved because the U of T's position and the mayor's position is no one wants to see the school children hurt, and if they didn't qualify for the 4 percent funding from the state, that would be teachers laid off, that would be schools closed, that would be a negative for the education system. So I think, and I applaud them, they were prudent, they were wise, they said let's come together and resolve what we have to resolve so we qualify for state funding, let's get this appeals worked out, and the other issues will be worked out when they're worked out. But they're not guaranteed the money, I think what Lisa's asking is, they're not guaranteed the money just because they've worked out the appeals process, they have to get an evaluation system in place, and that has to be negotiated, and there are still outstanding issues. My understanding is, Ken, this was the outstanding issue that was difficult on the appeals pro on the evaluation. It was about the appeals process. That's why both the mayor and Michael Mulgrew asked me to get involved in the appeals process, because that was the outstanding issue, and they were afraid of losing the 4 percent. They will not lose the 4 percent, this law will actually say that the appeals process will go into place uh, no later than the day before the deadline for the 4 percent next January. 16th or 17th? 16th. 17th? Either the 16th or the 17th. Uh, so that will make sure that they will they'll get the 4 percent funding and the other issues will be worked out when they're worked out. What? Both. Both. Both the mayor and Mr. Mulgrew, he said here today, uh, they both had said this was a problem. They both had spoken with me and asked if there was a way that we could get involved uh, and help. They had different modalities that we could help through, but uh, this is, the, this is uh, all's well that ends well, and we have a resolution. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Thank you.